City of Giants We often talk about aliens being responsible for building great monuments like the pyramids, but did we ever consider it might be giants? In 2012, something was discovered deep in the Amazon that might suggest just that. A group of researchers, paired with a team of local guides, discovered what appears to be the remains of a large city close to the Ecuador side of the forest. At the center of the city was a large stone pyramid, 80 meters tall, with a flat area on top which held many artifacts. Scattered around the area were many things like old pottery and most curiously, massive stone tools. They appeared to be much too large and heavy for any average sized human to ever have been able to use. The government of Ecuador ruled that the formations were just naturally occurring, but the researchers heavily dispute this, saying that due to the rectangle shaped bricks, cement like bonding material, and perfectly circular holes, it can't possibly have been caused by nature. Instead, they, and others, believe that this was a city built by giants long ago. What you believe is up to you. Number 9. The Mapinguari Monster There are many different tribes scattered throughout the Amazon, some without contact to each other, and some without contact to even the outside world. Yet one thing that they all have in common are their stories of a large, 7 foot tall, rainforest beast, similar to many cultures' depictions of Bigfoot. The creature is described to be bulletproof and having long hair. It apparently also has a smell that is so strong it makes hunters dizzy. These stories are so widespread and similar that many researchers have gone out in search of the monster with no luck so far. Some scientists say that this is likely just a legend passed down for centuries, dating back to when giant land sloths roam the forests. But local people believe it to be a spirit that will kill those who hunt more than their fair share. Number 8. The Boiling River. Hidden deep in the Amazon forest is a hidden river with unexpected and potentially magical properties. Children are told the legends of the Boiling River, about a giant snake spirit that heats it up. Andre Russo went in search of the river after having been raised on the legends by his grandfather, wanting to know if the stories of a boiling river could possibly be true. He took a long journey to reach the supposed location of the river, having to ask permission from a shaman who guarded the waters in order to gain access and study it. Russo discovered that the average temperature of the river was a whopping 187 degrees Fahrenheit, with steam pouring out from the top. It's speculated that the river boils due to faults deep in the earth, but locals believe that it's a magical river with healing properties, and use it in their medicinal practices. When Russo was there, he noticed the scariest part of the river, that it kills just about anything that falls into it, dead frogs and other animals floating around where he stood on the edge. Number 7. The Potu Bird Throughout the Amazon rainforest lives a bird known as the common Potu Bird. If it's so common, then what makes it so scary? I mean, besides its face. First, let's mention these birds' tendency to always be found in pairs of two, a male and a female. Because of this, legend goes that there were two children, a boy and a girl, living with their father and stepmother. The stepmother was evil and greedy, wanting to gain all of her husband's inheritance, so she convinced the man to abandon his children within the forest to die. He succeeds, leaving them lost in the forest with no hope for them to find their way out. However, the mother spirit of the forest took pity on them and adopted the two as her own children, making them into birds. Stories go that the call of the Potu bird sounds like children calling out in anguish, desperate to escape the forest and return to their family. If you think this legend sounds a lot like Hansel and Gretel, you'd be right. This one just contains a lot less candy and witches. Number 6. Dangerous Animals well, we've somehow made it this far without mentioning the many scary and terrifying creatures hiding within the depths of the forest. Life in the forest has evolved these creatures to have many unique and frightening abilities in order to survive. Let's start with perhaps one of their most famous, piranhas. Piranhas live in the Amazon River Basin and are known for their incredibly strong and razor sharp bites, even being known to have eaten human flesh. Next. Poison dart frogs. While beautiful to look at, as their name suggests, they secrete a poison that can cause heart failure in just a few minutes. Arachnophobes look away as I'm going to tell you about the Brazilian wandering spider. It is one of the most venomous spiders on the planet, and eight different species of them wander the forest at night in search of food. So you may want to double check your sleeping bag before you get in, as their venom can lead to trouble breathing and paralysis. Finally, a very famous name in the rainforest, the green 
green anaconda, or man-eater. These snakes can grow incredibly large and kill their prey by suffocating them within a tight coiled hold. Number five. Amazon rings. The Amazon rings are famous massive circular ditches, sometimes up to 16 feet deep and just as wide. So how could these geoglyphs have appeared within the forest? The reality seems to be that these were created before the forest itself even existed. It's hard to imagine a time before the Amazon forest grew, but studies suggest that these rings were created long before the forest was. It's thought to be more remnants of life in the Amazon before the Europeans arrived, with an estimated 6 to 10 million people living in the area. It's unsure just what exactly these rings were used for, and some people have gone as far as to suggest that aliens left the markings in the ground behind. A sort of Amazon crop circle. It's unfortunate that the discovery of these rings was a direct result of the clear cutting and logging going on in the forest. Number four, lost cities. Even as recently as the 20th century, explorers have been venturing into the rainforest for supposed lost cities that have never been found. Some of those explorers even becoming lost, never to be seen again, like the tale of British explorer Percy Fawcett. As it turns out, scientists have discovered that these lost cities that so many went in search of likely did really exist, thanks to some high-tech helicopter remote sensing technology. It seems that there were massive cities that were abandoned only some 600 hundred years ago, and it's believed that up to 2 million people lived in the rainforest at one point. The cities stretch for miles and include things like complex waterway systems and large conical pyramids. The true mystery is what happened to this civilization. How do entire cities disappear into the forest without a trace? As these cities were built with mud bricks and are almost completely destroyed, we may never know what really happened to them. Number 3. The Man of the Hole One famous resident of the vast rainforest is someone you've probably never heard of before. He is known as the man of the hole, as no one knows his true name or who he really is. So why is he so famous? He's indigenous to the rainforest and is known to be the very last remaining member of his remote tribe. The rest of his people were killed by farmers and land grabbers who wanted to make use of the land that they'd been living on. As a result, he is the loneliest man in the world, no one knowing his language or how to communicate with him. And it seems as though he doesn't want anyone to anyways. He has attacked government officials who have tried to come close, living on his now protected territory, digging holes to hide in and capture animals, earning his name of the man in the hole. It's also thought that he may be making these holes to try and capture anyone who would dare get close to him. He has been caught on camera only a few times, showing us that he's still around. Number two. El Tunche. If you ever, for some reason, find yourself walking through the rainforest and you hear a distant whistling sound, it would be wise of you not to seek it out, especially if you've been stomping on a few too many plants lately. That's because what you are hearing might be the call of El Tunche, a demon who wanders the forest, protecting the wildlife and condemning those who would harm it. If you haven't done any damage to the forest, then he'll probably just scare you off. But if you have, you might as well start running. By calling out, the demon is trying to entice you to whistle back and reveal your exact location to him. If you do so, El Tunche's call will grow louder and louder, following you wherever you go. Eventually, it invades your mind as you sleep, drawing you into madness. I think that's a good enough reason to start being a little bit kinder to our natural surroundings. Number one, El Lobizon. A widespread legend across South America is that of El Lobizon. It is a werewolf-like creature that can be seen walking on all fours and also on its hind legs. Different from Western and Hollywood interpretations and depictions of werewolves, El Lobizon is not created through a bite, but instead born. Any seventh son that is born in an unbroken line of boys will become the creature, usually transforming around their 13th birthday. The stories have caused people to abandon, give up, or even kill their own seventh son. Every full moon, the boy will transform into the wolf-like creature, hunting down prey with unmatched speed and endurance. While just a legend, with a place as vast as the rainforest, who knows if El Lobizon isn't hiding in those darkest hidden corners. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have pink dolphins. There's a few weird things going on with these guys, but let's start with the most obvious, which is of course their color. These residents of the Amazon River are the largest of all river dolphins, and adults end up acquiring a strange pink coloring, which is more prominent in the males. Scientists aren't exactly sure why these guys are pink or why 
their color comes later in life, as they are born with a more grey color that is usually expected of dolphins. There are of course theories as to how they get their colors however, with the most common being the thought that the color is brought on by scar tissue that results from either rough games or fighting with other pink dolphins or predators. I said at the beginning of this point that they are strange for a few reasons, and while their super unique and gorgeous color is one, the other has less to do with them and more about a very interesting legend that surrounds them. Legend goes that these dolphins actually transform into very handsome men in the evenings, and during this time they hypnotize and seduce young women before turning back to dolphins again near sunrise. The origins of this myth are rooted in some pretty dark cover ups, so I think it's best if we just lay that one to rest and let these dolphins not take the blame for humans awful behavior. In our number 9 spot today we have the boiling river. It is pretty common knowledge that the Amazon is home to the longest river in the world, but there is another Another river found in the Amazon rainforest that is equally as astonishing, but for a very different reason. The Boiling River got its name for being exactly that, as it is a river that is near a boiling point at all times. The water temperature reaches up to 93 degrees Celsius, which is just shy of the boiling point, and the steam coming off of the surface of the water is an obvious warning to all living creatures that it is absolutely unswimmable. You could, however, poach an egg in this river, although that's probably not the recommended cooking method. There is still debate around the source of heat for this river, but as of right now it is believed to be entirely natural and geothermal. Despite the river not being near any active volcanoes or geothermal vents, it is quite an anomaly. There are of course more local legends that state the river is a place of power and that the mother of waters is responsible for the creation of this incredible and strange river. Either way, just don't swim in the river and everything will be fine. In our number 8 spot today we have Victoria Amazonica. This water lily is one of many abnormally large things that can be found in the Amazon rainforest, and it is found in the shallow waters of the Amazon river basin. These lilies are not only the world's largest water lily, but they can also hold the weight of an adult human. They will begin to flower as the sun sets and take up to 48 hours to completely open, and they are absolutely beautiful. These flowers are not only super strong and super beautiful, but as they open they also release a wonderful scent, which leaves me wondering if there's anything they can do. One thing to be careful of though, if you encounter one and decide to step on it, it is that their leaves have thorns to protect them from predators, so watch out for those. Actually on a second thought, just because they can hold a human doesn't mean we have to step on them at all. Let's just admire their beauty and strength from afar and let them just be lilies like they're meant to be. In our number 7 spot today we have the Patu. I don't know if that's how you say that, but that's who we're going with. Ok, these guys definitely aren't the strangest thing on today's list, but they certainly look extremely strange. I'm sure a lot of us have seen a picture of them at some point because of their wild appearance that reminds you of your one friend that just can't quite keep it together. But despite them having a bit of a silly look on their faces, these birds actually possess some pretty cool skills. They are masters at disguising themselves and have the ability to remain motionless for days on end. They are nocturnal creatures so it isn't often that we get to spot them flying around, and during the daytime they are so good at camouflaging themselves that you'll likely only be seeing them if they want to be seen. This is just one of those scenarios where we are reminded to not judge a book by its cover, because despite their goofy appearance, they are actually pretty serious birds with some serious talent. In our number 6 spot today we have the bullet ant. Before I dive into this one guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far. I'm sure the bullet ant is one creature on this list that many of us know about, but that certainly doesn't mean it isn't very strange. These creatures are obviously ants, but with one feature that makes them unlike others of their kind. They are the world's largest ant which is cool, but their name is where things get a little crazy. Some people believe they are named for their size as they are roughly the size of a bullet but it is much more widely speculated that they are named because of the fact that their sting feels like getting shot by a bullet. I have not seen a bullet ant in real life, or been bit by one, and also haven't been shot, so I cannot confirm any of these things, but that's just what the internet tells me. The pain is said to last for 24 hours and causes waves of burning, throbbing, and all consuming pain, which sounds like something I absolutely do not want to experience. Maybe these guys are where the term small but mighty comes from, considering that 
their bite is considered to be one of the most painful things a person can experience. I think I might try my best to stay away from them, even though it's unlikely I'll die from a bullet ant, I'm just not taking any risks and I'd rather not go through that kind of pain if I can avoid it. In our number 5 spot today we have Rafflesia. Okay, remember how I said that there's a bunch of abnormally large things that can be found in the Amazon rainforest? Well, here's another one just to prove I wasn't lying. This flower is the world's largest flower, but it also has no roots, no stems, and no leaves, and instead lives as a holoparasite on the vines of a tetrastigma, which is a genus of plants in the grape family. This flower is very similar to fungi, and the only identifiable feature that is distinctly plant like are the huge flowers, but even those are unusual of course due to their unbelievable size as well as their reddish brown color. One more strange part about these huge flowers is their smell which apparently is comparable to rotting flesh. These flowers are also apparently on the verge of extinction, so between that and the smell I feel like this might just be a flower to stay far far away from. In our number 4 spot today we have the decoy building spider. Okay. I do not like spiders, so I really didn't want to include any on this list, but I absolutely had to once I found out about this small but mighty creature. These decoy building spiders are exceptionally small but super smart. These spiders only measure to be about 5 millimeters in length, but you might see a much larger spider hanging out in a web they created. This might sound alarming, but this spider is actually a decoy that the small spider built out of various materials such as food scraps, debris, and even their own old shed skin. It might not be the most beautiful work of art, but that is an unbelievable defense mechanism for such a tiny creature. These spiders were actually only discovered pretty recently, so not too much is known about them as there still needs to be a ton of research done. It is however believed that this is a feature that has evolved in this particular spider, so it is possible that we only recently discovered it because it might be a newer feature. But the Amazon rainforest does hold many, many living creatures creatures that we have yet to identify, so who really knows? All in all, this spider is very unique and strange, and basically the Michelangelo of spiders. In our number 3 spot today we have the corpse flower. Ok, we're back with another strangely large thing, and this time it is another flower that is called the corpse flower, which is a terrible nickname for a flower. This flower is deep green on the outside and a beautiful burgundy color on the inside, and it also features the world's largest unbranched inflorescence in the world. Both male and female female flowers grow inside of the same inflorescence, but the females bloom first with the males following in a day or two, which usually prevents the flowers from self pollinating. These plants usually require 7 to 10 years before the initial blooming period, and after that, the blooming tends to be fairly sporadic. Some will take another 7 to 10 years, and some are able to bloom every other year. As the flower blooms, it is around human body temperature, which allows for its scent to be quite prominent, which you think would be nice, but apparently this is a another flower that smells like a rotting corpse, which is where it gets its awful nickname from. These odors however are super helpful to the plant as it allows it to attract pollinators, which are usually insects that like to feast on rotting flesh. So I guess while the scent is unbelievably unpleasant to humans, at least there are creatures that are more helpful to this flower that actually enjoy it, which I guess is just probably for the best. In our number 2 spot today we have this plastic eating fungi. This is a fungi that could help us solve one of the world's most pressing issues issues, which is the overpopulation of plastic. We have way too much plastic on this earth and virtually no way to get rid of it, but this discovery could help us fix that. This is the very first fungus ever found that can support itself on polyurethane in anaerobic conditions, which means that it not only can consume plastic, but it also does not require oxygen for growth. In fact, oxygen may even affect it negatively, which could make it a perfect species to help remove plastic from our oceans and other places with little to no oxygen. This is a fairly new discovery which means it of course is still in the research phase. It will require more time before we are exactly sure how to best utilize its incredible properties, but this may be the solution to one of humanity's biggest questions and problems. And of course this isn't a ticket to just start throwing plastic in the oceans and should serve as a reminder to us all that our earth is full of unbelievable things and if we stopped ruining it for a second we might be able to realize its full potential and see just just how lucky we all are to have such a beautiful planet. In our number 1 spot today we have Silkhenge. Okay, 
We already talked about one spider that was actually pretty cool, and begrudgingly, I have to talk about another one because it also is equally as unbelievable. But here's the strangest part about it we don't even actually know what the spider is. There is some kind of spider that is making what is referred to as Silkenge. This piece of spider art was first discovered in 2013 by Troy Alexander, who posted a photo of it on the internet asking for help in identifying it, but no one could help because it's a totally unknown phenomena. These structures are created by spiders and help with reproduction because they're actually protecting eggs. There is one main spire that is constructed of spider silk and that is where the eggs are contained, and then surrounding that spire is a sort of circular fence that is also made of spider silk. The name comes from its similar appearance to Stonehenge, and no one knows what kind of spider is making these insane structures, or if it's a multitude of different kinds of spiders. Either way, it certainly is one of the most astonishing things being created by a tiny mysterious creature. Hopefully one day we find out the creators of these sculptures so we can give them the proper credit they deserve. Kick you off the list at number 10. Mystery spider. Yeah, for this first one, we're not even sure what kind of spider it is. How calming is that? Let's do it. Some kind of spider is making what's referred to as Silkenge. Yeah, this piece of spider art was first discovered back in 2013 by Troy Alexander, who posted a photo of it on the internet, asking for help and identifying what exactly he's looking at, but no one could help identify it because it's a totally unknown phenomenon. These structures are created by spiders or some sort of spider to help with reproduction because they're protecting their eggs. It looks quite alien, but this is all just to protect little baby spiders in that middle tip. There's one main spire that's constructed of spider silk, and that's where the eggs are contained, and then surrounding that spire is a sort of a circular fence that is also made of spider silk. Similar appearance to Stonehenge, hence the name Silkenge. But to this day, we haven't found much. This was discovered back in 2013, and only a year ago, we got more information. Tropical science communicator Phil Torres recently visited Peru, and he got footage in 4K. It's beautiful. We no longer have to slide through the same three grainy photos. Check this out. Torres explains how this research has affected his well-being, obviously. He said it's the thing that keeps him up at night because it's so annoyingly hard to find. Despite having seen it in so many places he goes, the next time it's like it was never there at all. Yeah, that's frustrating. It's also tiny too. In this recent clip, it's beautiful. Again, high definition. You can really see how intricate the work is. But Torres also discovered that these things are tiny and they come in clusters. So if you find one, there's probably a few nearby. Also, don't destroy it. We still have no idea who or what's making these silk hinges, so take some photos, hang out a bit, do some research. Number nine, the Brazilian wandering spider. Its bite can give you an erection that lasts for hours. That's a real fact, and that's how I'm gonna start this uh, point here. This animal is dangerous. Its bite, of course, will hurt you. You'll be sweating. Blood pressure will increase, hence that side effect. They're more commonly known as banana spiders, so guess I can't eat bananas anymore. There goes my favorite snack. These little guys have been listed as the world's most venomous spider in a handful of years in the Guinness Book of World Records. We love, we love records. Record-breaking spiders. If its name didn't already tip you off, these things can be found in Brazil. There's eight different kinds of wandering spiders. Um, avoid them all. That's my advice here on MA10. That's it. How does that sound? Boom. Science is quite interesting here. They're trying to create the next Viagra using the spider's venom. That's why I started with that wild side effect. There's always a point to it. I'm not just being silly all the time. The future is here, friends, and apparently it's filled with spiders. Just cuts to a bunch of old dudes in the woods just hanging out like... Mm, please. Number eight, bullet ants. They're called bullet ants because their bite feels like a bullet wound. Promising start, awesome. They're also referred to as the Parapanera clavada, but that sounds like a dark curse in Harry Potter, so we're gonna call them the bullet ant for now. They're commonly found in tropical rainforests in Central and South America. Their sting is considered, yeah, the most powerful in the world, hence the bullet thing, and its effects can last 24 hours. Yeah, another fun nickname for them is a 24-hour ant. They're also the world's largest ant, so you can really see it coming. You should see it coming, worst case scenario. These guys get you in a colony, though? Game over. There's a good chance you won't even survive at all. One bite is bad enough, let alone a colony. Its venom's so powerful, it's being studied right now for its use as a pesticide. Yeah, we're sacrificing ants to further our research on how to sacrifice ants. This is dark, that sounds pretty dark when you say it like that. There's actually an indigenous Amazonian tribe in Brazil, and they use bullet ant stings as part of a ceremonial process to become a warrior. I would not pass, I wouldn't even make it to the island. I'm not good with bugs. They have to keep a straight face the entire time whilst getting bit. 
That's so impressive. Number seven, dart frog. You may be thinking, thank God, a frog, something cute, something unlike the bullet ant. Guess again, mm, not this time. Small but mighty, the poison dart frog is one of the deadliest animals on earth. I left the word poison out of the title. I juked you out, I did it on purpose. Its shiny yellow skin will certainly attract the eye, but if you decide to try and, you know, catch one of these slippery boys, its poison can kill 10 fully grown adults. All bad. Indigenous hunters figured this out and they coated the tips of their arrows or darts in this toxin. The toxin created naturally here is called Batracotoxin. Another creature we've mentioned on this channel before that also has the same toxin is the Pitui bird. That's in Australia though, it's far away. Either way, a lot of poison moving around us in nature. It's actually pretty alarming. Birds and frogs, just, I'm gonna stay home. I'm just gonna stay home and do this all day. Number six, mosquitoes. These guys suck, no matter where you are. But when it comes to the Amazon, like everything else, it's much worse than you could ever imagine. Mosquitoes are one of the most dangerous because they can fly and you don't see them coming. And once they get you, the damage has already been done. They're just full of blood. How gross is that? They're horrible. They're if you travel to parts of the Amazon rainforest and you don't have yellow fever vaccinations or extremely strong mosquito repellent, you're gonna have a bad time. These suckers are clouds of malaria just waiting for you to walk into by accident. And then you go, oh, and it's too late. Number five, decoy spider. Oh, these are all horrible. These decoy building spiders are exceptionally small, but super, super smart. These spiders only measure to be about five millimeters in length, but you might see a much larger spider hanging out in a web that they've created. See, this might sound scary, but this large spider is actually a fake spider. It's a decoy. It's a decoy spider that the small spider built out of various materials like food scraps, debris, even their old skin to make a bigger, scarier spider. That's horrible, I wish I didn't know this. Look, art is subjective, okay, that's for sure. I don't think this is the most lovely piece of animal art on the planet, but it works, it gets the job done. A rather impressive defense mechanism for such a tiny little dude. These spiders were only discovered pretty recently, so again, not much is known about them, as there still needs to be tons of research done, just like the other horrible spider on this list. It is, however, believed that this is a feature that has evolved in this particular spider, so it's possible we've only recently discovered it because it's a new feature. Yeah, how neat is that? Hey, spiders are learning new tricks. Hit that thumbs up. <laughs> I'm so scared, cheers. Number four, the electric eel. First of all, never rub an electric eel like they're a genie lamp. You're gonna want three more wishes if you do that, my friend. That was the moray eel. That one can bite your fingers off, which is horrible. But you should never touch an eel in the first place because a lot of them are electric. As its name hints towards, these type of eels can mess you up even if you weren't to get the first hit. Specifically, the newly discovered two and a half meter Electrophorus Volti. Yeah, the Electrophorus Volti. No, that's not a new hybrid car coming out on the market. This is a dangerous beast. It was appropriately named after Alessandro Volta, AKA the guy who invented the battery, and it can release a shock up to 860 volts, more than seven times the voltage of your average wall plug. It was recently discovered only a year ago that electric eels in Amazon rivers like to travel in packs. They like to travel with their friends and they all head to the bar together. How fun is that? Packs of electric water snakes. Does it get worse than that? It can't get worse than that, can it? Number three, black caiman. It can get worse than that. It can get a lot worse than that. If you're not a fan of alligators, you might wanna to skip to the next one. Black caiman is the largest family member in the Alligator Day crew. These super alligators live in calm, slow moving rivers, places you wouldn't expect, you know, a dinosaur to be and jump out at you, essentially. Just like dangerous river snakes, one I might talk about later, these black caiman will take it slow and just wait for their prey to have a sip of water. And then at that point, the largest predator in the Amazon will grab its lunch and quickly return to the water, just like that. Be very loud and very fast. This thing eats birds, it eats reptiles, mammals even. Even, yeah, yeah. This thing can and will eat everything. Between 2008 and 2013 alone, there were 43 black caiman attacks on people. Yeah, a handful of these attacks were fatal. I'll leave it at that. Number two, pink dolphins. We'll do a nice one before we do the horrible big bad number one, deal? Deal. Pink dolphins of the Amazon River. They're the largest of all river dolphins and adults. More often than not, males end up turning pink as they age, and we have no idea why. Scientists aren't exactly sure why these guys are pink or why the color comes later in life, seeing as, you know, they're born gray. Our leading theory here is that the color is brought on by scar tissue that results from fighting with other dolphins or predators. I'm sure it's not an easy go, you know, swimming through schools of electric eels and all that jazz, so yeah, fair. It could be a pretty rough environment. Some old legends hilariously mention that pink dolphins maybe can 
can turn into a handsome man in the evenings. And then during this time, they would hypnotize and seduce young women before turning back into dolphins again near sunrise. Yeah, forget Morbius. I want to see that movie. That's a supervillain origin story I would pay to see. The pink dolphin handsome man. He has one day to find love, and then he turns back into a dolphin. Number one, green anacondas. Of course, we have to talk about the anaconda, specifically the green anaconda. It's green like the Hulk, because it's always angry and scary and violent. This movie came out 25 years ago. I remember watching Anaconda with my family, and it made me extremely afraid of snakes, actually. This was probably the one that did it. So how accurate was that film? Although the green anaconda is a non-venomous snake, the boa constrictor is still one of the most dangerous ever. It's the most feared. Definitely the most feared. Green anacondas live in calm marshes or slow streams, and again, they wait until their large prey gets thirsty, and once they come to the water, the anaconda suffocates and wraps around its lunch. Yeah. Anacondas hunt prey that's larger than us humans, so if they wanted to, they could for sure eat us. There's only no evidence of it happening because humans rarely interact with them in general, so anacondas probably don't know they could eat us. Green anacondas can reach lengths of up to 30 feet, so plenty of space for you and yours. Awesome. You and yours. He ends it on a crack, on a voice crack. That's great. That's how scared I am, this anaconda. Mm -hmm.